Welcome. I'd like to talk to you a bit about the physics of vibrating air columns. And as an example, I'd like to use one of my favorite instruments, which is the bagpipe. Great Highland bagpipe, in fact. You can see Hamish here is not having a lot of luck with his cat being appreciative of his music. And probably uh, the difficulty Hamish, difficulty Hamish is having is due to the dissonance between the four different elements which make up the sound coming of the bagpipe. So the four elements are the chanter, here, that's where you hear the melody coming from, and the three drums, the bass drum and two tenor drums, which emit a constant note the whole time he's playing. If these are not properly in tune, then the bagpipe does not sound so good, and uh, the cat is not pleased. So what we want to do today is help Hamish understand a little bit about what's happening within this instrument, and maybe make his cat appreciate the music a bit better. Okay, so first of all, the sound in the uh, uh, from the bagpipe comes from a vibrating reed. That is what gets the air vibrating throughout the column and the length of uh, each of these different tubes. So there's different types of reeds in here, but I'll show you the reed for the chanter. It looks like this. Here's the drawing of it. And if I blow this like this, it doesn't sound so good. Okay, in fact, it's, it's quite unpleasant. And we have uh, a number of different frequencies coming out of that, and uh, really it's not, not so nice in the years. However, if I put this reed in like so, and I cover up a bunch of the holes, and I blow, lovely, sounds really nice, right? So, what is the difference? Mostly one frequency is being played, depending on how many holes I cover up, that's a really nice sound. So why is that? The reason for this nice sound is the physical phenomenon of resonance. And here I've shown a schematic of a closed end pipe, which is what this acts as. And we have a standing wave pattern set up. We have quarter quarter resonance, quarter wavelength resonance set up here. And um, in fact, what happens is the length of the pipe actually determines, the, it actually influences how the reed itself is vibrating. And it will vibrate at that, at that specific resonant frequency. Okay. So now that we have those parameters set, where lambda is the, is the wavelength, if we drew the wave the complete length, rather than just this quarter, uh, quarter wavelength here, um, how this wave is, uh, is uh, motion of the air is um, described by the, the uh, wave equation, which is V equals F lambda. So V is the speed of uh, sound in, a, a, in air, and F is the frequency of the vibration, and lambda is the wavelength. <clears throat> so when we're playing a musical instrument, of course, we can't change the velocity of the air uh, too easily. Um, we're looking for different frequencies, and so well, we can change lambda by changing the length of the pipe. Uh, in, in which the wave is resonating. So if we solve for f, we've got f equals v over lambda, this is what we can control here. Okay, so we have the idea that different lengths of vibrating air will give us different frequencies. So we create a device, this is like most woodwind instruments, like so, where we can easily change the length of the air column by covering different holes with our fingers. Uh, there's one hole in the back here which you can't see. So let's just check this out then for one of our notes on the, on the chanter. Uh, if we cover all the holes except for this last one here, that gives us what we call uh, an A note on the bagpipe chanter. Okay? So let's do that. So if we uh, take a look at the chanter here and we'll measure the length of uh, the length of the column then to the top, just to the top of, of uh, this hole here, which would be the uh, effective end of the, of the air column, and we get 0.18 meters. Okay, so let's see what that corresponds to then. <clears throat> if uh, the 0.18 meters would be a, a quarter wavelength, so then if we multiply 0.18 times 4, this would give us a wavelength of 0.72. Now, for the wave equation, we also need the velocity of sound in air, and uh, that can vary a little bit with temperature, but for normal room temperature, 
it's going to be about 343 meters per second. So for this exercise, we'll just use this number here. Okay, so the wave equation, then, as we uh, did on before, frequency equals the velocity of sound in air divided by the wavelength. 342 divided by 0.72, to go from there, gives us 476 hertz. Okay, that's supposed to be A, and those of you who are musicians are going to say, well, that's not A. Uh, by international agreement, concert A uh, should be 440 hertz. Well, at one time, the bagpipe probably was 440 hertz for A, but the Scots like to do things a little different, and uh, um, over the years, the pitch has come up and up and up, a little bit sharper and sharper. So now, uh, you will find different uh, pipers will, will play, usually in the 470, somewhere around there. If we want to play with brass instruments, uh, with, uh, that's a combined band, then we actually have to use different chanters that are longer, a little bit longer than these, and uh, holds you a little bit different positions so that uh, our frequencies will match and it doesn't sound terrible. Okay, so, Let's take a look now at the, uh, at, the, at the drones. So the idea of a drone instrument is the drones will produce a pitch that is constant and unvarying throughout the playing of, uh, of a tune. And the melody um, then will be enhanced with this droning sound, but only if there is some kind of uh, resonance or agreement between the frequencies. So the um, bagpipe, uh, the tonic of the bagpipe is uh, A, and we have two A's on the chanter, so when we cover up all these notes like so, except the last one, we call that our low A, and then we let go of them all so that um, only we have a very short air problem there, that's our high A. Um, so the low A, as we, denote, as, we, as we just figured out, should be about 476 hertz. Let's see what the drone, this drone here, now should also be an A but it's going to be, it should be one octave lower if we've uh, done everything correctly here. So what I want to do is measure this. You can see the tenor drone here. These are the two short ones. They should be exactly the same. Um, they can be adjusted. They, the length can be adjusted uh, by moving this top bit up and down on this uh, slide here. So if we measure that, we get, uh, okay, let's see. So, we find that, in fact, we get exactly twice the length that we have on here. Okay, so that measurement should be, uh, or is 0.36 meters. Okay. If we take a look at what, the, what wavelength that corresponds to, the resonant wavelength, we would take 4 times 0.36, gives us 1.44 meters for the wavelength, and we plunk that into the wave equation, Okay, and we end up with 238 hertz, which is exactly twice, uh, uh, sorry, well, exactly one half of what we had with the uh, chatter playing the same note. Okay, so one octave lower. And we can, we can adjust that so that it matches perfectly. Okay. If we now take a look at the bass drum, so that's this big one here, we want that to be in tune with. Um, with the tenor drums, and so that should also be an A, but it should be one off the lower again. And if we take a look at that, we'll measure the length of this, okay, from here down to there, okay, and we see once again that it's exactly twice the length of the tenor drum. Okay, and if we, so at 0.72 meters times four, gives us a wavelength of 2.88, and a frequency of 119 hertz. And that's exactly one octave below the tenor drums. Okay, so now the, uh, uh, all we have to do, um, this is hypothetical, we've got to make it actually work on here. And what makes the, the difference between this bagpipe sounding good and not so good uh, is trying to get all these different sounds sound nice and, uh, and together. So what we have to do is fine tune it, make sure that these frequencies are, are just right on. Okay, they should all be agreeing um, and, and be exactly one on the rule of one another. The way we do that is by looking or listening for what's called beat frequency. As you know, 
when you have two frequencies that are, uh, or two sound sources which are very, very slightly in frequency, you'll have a superposition of waves and you'll have got this overlaying uh, beat frequency sound, or the beat sound. And it'll sound kind of wah, 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 wah like that. Okay, and the closer that you get in frequency to, to one another from the two, two or, or more sound sources, then this envelope here will get stretched out and you'll hear wah, 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 and it gets, if the frequencies get further apart, that frequency will increase and you get a wah, 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 wah kind of effect. So what we're doing when we're tuning the background is we're listening and, uh, to that beat and trying to get rid of the beat. So we're, we're, the frequency of the beat should get lower and lower and lower until, you know, here, and then we're perfectly in tune. So let's give that a try, shall we? I'm just going to plug off the, the chanter hole here to make this a little easier for you to hear. Okay?